So if you recall from our work with topological homotopy theory, the keys to defining right and left homotopy were path space objects and cylinder objects respectively. So let's define these things in the abstract setting of model categories. Again, these are characterized via diagonals and co-diagonals. So a path space object is a factorization of the diagonal, i.e. a map from x to x cross x as a weak equivalence followed by a vibration. Dually, a cylinder object is a factorization of the co-diagonal, i.e. a map from x disjoint union x to x as a co-fibration followed by a weak equivalence. Well, you might recall the weak factorizations of a model category, in particular that we can do even better than the factorizations we just described. We can factor the diagonal as an acyclic co-fibration followed by a fibration, not just a weak equivalence followed by a fibration. And dually, we can factor um, the co-diagonal as a co-fibration followed by an acyclic fibration. Some people call these very good path space and cylinder objects. In fact, some requires don't e some authors don't even require the fibration and co-fibration parts of our definition, original definition. Um, they just require that a path space object factors a diagonal as a weak equivalence followed by something, and dually a cylinder object factors a co-diagonal as something followed by a weak equivalence. Nonetheless, we take um, the approach from definition 218 from before. So here's a useful definition that the NLAB doesn't include explicitly, but I've included for completeness. Um, an object X is said to be fibrant if and only if the map from X to the terminal object is a vibration, and dually it is said to be um, cofibrant if the map from the initial object to X is a cofibration. So we can always find some cylinder object for X, an object of the category that factors as an acyclic cofibration followed by a weak equivalence, and dually some path space object that is a weak equivalence followed by an acyclic vibration. But it turns out that we um, can have an even stronger statement with some added conditions. If X is cofibrant, then every cylinder object factors as factors the codiagonal as a map um, followed by a weak equivalence, where each component map um, is separately an acyclic cofibration. Dually, if X is fibrant, then every path space object factors diagonal as a weak equivalence followed by a fibration whose um, components are e each an acyclic fibration. To see this, um, we prove the path space case and the other is just dual. Well, each component map is a map from X to path X, and by definition, it has a right inverse, which is a weak equivalence. Um, and so the entire map is a weak equivalence in particular, and so by two out of three it follows that each component map is a weak equivalence. To see that it is a vibration, consider this diagram. Since X is fibrant, the right morphism is a vibration, and since these are closed under pulp X, it follows that the right and top morphisms are vibrations as well. Well then each component map is a map from the path space object to X cross X to X, Hence, the composite of a vibration, which is by definition um, followed by another vibration, which we just showed. Hence, it is itself a vibration, and we are done. So it turns out that path space objects are not very unique. Just consider the standard topological path space object, which is the mapping space out of the interval of length 1. We can construct a new path space object out of two copies of this and end up with the mapping space out of the interval of length 2 instead of 1. We can generalize this idea and obtain a path space object from any other two path space objects by forming what is called the fiber product under the assumption that X is vibrant. It is the pullback in this middle square here. The middle left morphism is a vibration since the middle right is and they are closed under pullbacks. The top left morphism is a weak equivalence and we see this in the following way. The maps in red are weak equivalences on the level of component maps. So I'm not saying x and x, x and x times x are weakly homotopy equivalent, but that the component map from x to x is. But from this, the um, top left morphism has a weak equivalence by 2 out of 3. So that was just an example. 
Returning to definitions, left and right homotopies are defined as they were in the topological case with um, cylinder objects and path space objects respectively. But of course, in the abstract setting of a model category, we use the abstract definitions of these objects. Now we have a pretty cool proposition that I mentioned before when covering left and right homotopies in the topological setting. First, we have this lemma from which that proposition will follow easily. Um, so let f and g be parallel morphisms from x to y. So if x is cofibrin, then each left homotopy corresponds to a right homotopy with respect to any chosen path space object. And if y is fibrant, then um, dually for each right homotopy, there's a left homotopy with respect to any chosen cylinder object. So in particular, if x is cofibrin and y is fibrin, we can just keep applying this lemma and get that every left homotopy is exhibited by every cylinder object, and dually that every right homotopy is exhibited by every path space object. We will prove um, the first case where x is cofibrin and the other is again just dual. So we have this commuting diagram. The top map is a composite of x to y and y to the path space by inclusion. The only other ambiguous map is maybe the bottom one. It is a map from sil x to x to y on one of the y's, and the assumed left homotopy on the other y. So by assumption, x is cofibrin, and so the left vertical mor morphism is an acyclic cofibration. Um, since the right one is a fibration, we have a lift from sil x to path y, and just rearranging this gives us a right homotopy with respect to path y. So perhaps, so here's perhaps a punchline you remember. If X is cofibrin and Y is fibrant, again in a modal category, then the relations of left homotopy and right homotopy coincide, and both are equivalence relations. So if you've taken an introductory algebraic topology class, you might wonder why we never heard of a distinction between left and right homotopy. Well, in the classical model structure on topological spaces, Every object is fibrant and CW complexes are cofibrin. So for most of the cases we encounter in an introductory course, we have CW complexes and the notions of left and right homotopy coincide. I think that's pretty cool.